Good morning and welcome to the first session of uh, this morning at the JC conference. Uh, we are going to talk about the Palestinian citizens of Israel and uh, their being a key piece in the puzzle of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. Uh, I'm very thankful for you to joining us uh, this morning. This session is also live streamed and is being followed by people back home in Israel and uh, in other places. So uh, good morning to them too. Uh, I would like to ask you please to turn off your electronic devices so we can have this conversation with no interruptions. Uh, my name is Nimrod Goren. I'm the head of MITVIM. MITVIM is the Israeli Institute for Regional Foreign Policy, a think tank working in Israel, uh, redefining Israel's regional relations, and among the rest, looking at the role that the Palestinian citizens of Israel uh, can have in promoting peace and better regional relations for Israel. At a time that we are in when there is stagnation of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process and when people are looking for hope and are trying to identify different driving forces for positive change, uh, we often forget that there is a group within the Israeli society uh, in which 80% uh, support, or even more than that, uh, the two-state solution. And that is not a marginal group, it's a group of 20% uh, of the Israeli society. It's a group that has much to benefit uh, from Israeli-Palestinian peace on a personal, on a national level, and it's a group that has much to contribute to achieving peace. Uh, but still, this group, the Palestinian citizens of Israel, is not very much involved, not in official decision-making processes on foreign policy, national security, peace process issues, uh, not much involved in issues related to Israel and the region in the Middle East, uh, although they can have uh, quite an important role with that, uh, and not very much involved also in civil society work of organization that are represented at this conference for the sake of promoting peace. Uh, so this panel will try to answer the questions of why this is the case, um, how can that be changed, and what will be the benefit if we manage to change that. I have with me four uh, distinguished speakers, uh, each of whom can present a very interesting dimension of the question at stake. I will introduce them very, very briefly because you have in the conference program the elaborated bio of each of them. Uh, I'll begin by uh, Amnon Beeri uh, Soliziano, the co-executive director of the Abraham Fund Initiatives in Israel. Um, he served in the past as the director of marketing communications at the Jerusalem Foundation under the leadership of uh, late Mayor Teddy Kolek, and he's been directing uh, the Abraham Foundation Initiative uh, Fund excuse me, uh, since 2004. Name is uh, Samach Salam, who is a member of Wahat Salam, Neve Shalom, the only Jewish Arab community built on equality and peace. She has the communication and development department. She's a social worker, community activist, feminist, and blogger, and writes for 972 magazine on issues relating to Israeli Palestinian uh, relationship. Uh, Tabitha Buraz, uh, with Abraham Fang as co executive director since 2014, has a rich background in leadership of civil society organization. Uh, Dr. Abouras is a political geographer by training, an expert in land use and, and planning, and has a PhD in geography and regional development from the University of Arizona, has, has been uh, on the board and member of many civil society uh, initiatives and organizations. Uh, and Isrin Shehada is a leading uh, leader in the Standing Together movement, serving as their community and outreach coordinator and the Haifa Circle uh, leader. And Nisrin is a doctor of chemical engineering and nanotechnology with a PhD from the Technion uh, in Haifa. So these are the speakers, and uh, the panel is actually in continuation to a work that Mitvim Institute and Abraham Fund has been doing uh, for quite some time uh, in an attempt to map this issue of the involvement of the Palestinian citizens of Israel in the peace process and to provide some ideas on how to move that forward. And I'm glad this got uh, to be featured in, in this conference. Uh, we'll be having a very quick round of Q&A questions that I will pose to the speakers and have them the chance to, to respond. Later on, we will open the stage uh, for the audience uh, for you to ask your question. There is a mic over there in the middle and those wanting to ask questions will line up there and ask their questions. Uh, we don't have lots of time because there is a plenary just after us, so we will try to keep both our discussion here very uh, concise and focused, and also the part where you are asking questions will have to be uh, with the same uh, character and nature. So thank you for the speakers, thank you for, uh, for J-Street and for Adina who helped organize this panel, uh, and let's start uh, going. And the first question um, to Tabet and to Nisreen, uh, I described why I think, in brief, this issue is important and we should, be we should be discussing it this morning. 
But why do you think, uh, Nisreen, we are uh, talking this morning about an important topic? Um, well, um, I'll start with just telling you a little bit something that, ha that happened to me a couple of years ago. I was in a, an international festival in one of the Palestinian cities in the uh, territories, and I met somebody, as you usually do, walk around meeting people, and, they, and he asked me, where am I from? Now, that is a very simple question, but it's extremely loaded for the Palestinian citizens of Israel. Because you can either say Israel, and then you have to go into this endless complex explanation about how there are non-Jewish citizens in Israel, and uh, or it can go very badly. <laughs> and you can say Palestine, as I did then, and then we were in Palestinian territory, so the obvious question was, where are you from? Where in Palestine. So I said that I was in Haifa, and that person said something along the lines of, I have no interest of interacting with traders. So that really explains a bit about the complexity that we, we live um, in our daily lives. We're viewed by traders as traders by some of the Palestinians, but we are also viewed as traders by many of the Israelis. Because we cannot and we will not turn our backs on, our Palestinian, on the Palestinian people because it's a, it's a thing of, of pure luck. If my ancestors uh, back in 48 chose to leave, uh, left their homes, instead of staying where they were, that could have easily been me in the Palestinian territories or in the refugee camps or anywhere around the world. So um, that directly affects our personality. We always have to live in this half and half reality of being Palestinian nationalists, but also Israeli citizens, citizens of the state of Israel. But only by working together uh, and trying to reach a peace treaty and a just and fair peace agreement, can we start to work on, after that we can start to work on our own civil rights inside the Israeli society, because it's affected a lot by the, the conflict and, the, um, and what's going on in the region. So for us as Palestinian citizens of Israel, in order to achieve the equality that we deserve and the life that, and the social justice that we think is our right, then we need to work towards that um, peace treaty, and it's extremely important to our everyday lives. Thank you. So issues of uh, personal identity and issues of linkage between domestic uh, status and uh, relation with the neighbors and the region. Uh, Thabet, what's your take on that? Yeah, why it's important? Just because uh, full equality uh, and uh, integration of the Arab community that we believe in should include the 20% of the uh, total, total uh, uh, citizens of the state of Israel. We believe that the Arab community should be in all realms of Israeli society. They should be in the academia, in the media, everywhere, and also in a peace movement. Well, it's important just because we are the people who understand uh, more than anybody else our country and our people in the same time. Uh, we believe that the participation uh, of Arabs in the peace movement will enhance confidence in the other side. After all, we are benefit from uh, peace more than anybody else. It's peace between our country, Israel, and our people, the Palestinians. And we can be hurt the most after all, we don't see enemies in any war in that region. For us, the victims and the casualties can be our cousins, our relatives, our uh, uh, people in the other side. Okay, they are not enemy for us. And or the victims can be our colleagues in universities, our students' universities, in the colleagues in the workplace, or our neighbors in Israel. So, and also following any insights, uh, always in there is tensions between uh, Palestinians and uh, Israelis. We are paying the most the price. We are actually in position uh, between the, uh, the rock and the hard place, uh, between being Palestinian citizen of the Palestinian, in my, our identity national identity, and being Israeli citizens. So this position is tough for us. So would like we, I believe, we are benefiting more than anybody else from agreement, peace agreement, or peace activities between, between our people and our country. 
Thank you. Having made the case that uh, this is indeed an important issue, uh, Amnon, what, what is the role of the Palestinian citizens of Israel in actual peace process, the official uh, peace negotiations that have been taking place until now? So, Nimrod, thank you very much and good morning. Uh, basically, if you ask what is the, um, you know, how well Israeli Arab citizens are represented in the Israeli peace organization, the short answer is that they are not represented and they are not active within Israeli peacemaking organizations. And the primary reason is the fact that Israeli peace organizations define themselves as Zionist organizations. And Israeli Arab citizens are not Zionist, and they find it very hard to identify with the Zionist sentiment. Um, on the other side, and this is why they're pulling away from those organizations. On the other side, the, the, those Zionist peace, uh, peacemaking organizations uh, are pushing away the, uh, the Arab uh, citizens of Israel, uh, and, and they're not really welcoming them into those organizations for the sake of returning their legitimacy within the Zionist public. Uh, many of them understand or are afraid that if, if they will be too, too welcoming, if they will be perceived as, as if they're working also for the benefit of the Arabs, their legitimacy within the mainstream Israeli public will be questions, questioned. So this is the primary reason, and ov obviously um, the ability of Israeli Arab citizens to identify and to work within the realm of Palestinian peacemaking organization is also not very practical, because again, their legitimacy and their loyalty to the state of Israel will be questions, questioned by the mainstream majority in Israel, and this is something that currently the Arab minority in Israel cannot afford. Thank you. Samach, in your reply, can you please uh, try and go beyond the peace organization into official peace process? Should we expect to see Palestinian citizens of Israel as negotiators, as part of the, of the team actually leading the peace process forward? Well, I, I think, thank you for, for being here this morning, and uh, thank you, Adina, for um, building a balanced uh, panel uh, from two women and two men, and this is not... Uh, um, I'm talking about politics and peace process. This is a, a very good start, so thank you for that. So I have uh, high expectations, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have high expectations from this conference, and I think the women who's leading here um, uh, have to be proud this morning. So um, uh, I think one of the failures of uh, uh, Oslo agreements that uh, uh, they isolated actually the 20% uh, of the uh, citizen of, of Israel, the Palestinian one. I do not agree with the Nasreen that we, uh, uh, we have the complicity in our identity after 70 years of, uh, of being and acting uh, inside the Israeli society as a part of uh, what's happening in our region. Um, I think that my generation and the next generation are uh, uh, feeling good with our multiple identities. We take this very, very serious, this citizenship uh, 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 status, and we play, we st I think that most of the Palestinians inside Israel uh, decided to play this play of the, the Israeli democracy. Actually, we are the Israeli democracy. There is no uh, democracy without minorities, so, uh, uh, so we are the living uh, evidence that peace with, uh, uh, between Palestinians and Israelis are possible, uh, is possible and I'm living in such a place. Wahda Salam Neve Shalom exists for the last 40 years and believe me, nobody left the village. Um, I think that we, uh, in the next step of the uh, peace process, is uh, uh, we have to step for we don't have to wait and I think that we, the Palestinians uh, uh, inside Israel have something to offer and this is uh, our role we don't have to f uh, I think that we should uh, challenge the uh, peace organization the uh, Zionist left uh, peace organization by our identity by our partnership with the Mizrahi movement with the feminist movement with lots of uh, 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 places that uh, uh, the struggle on the conflict find people from different backgrounds from different minorities uh, cooperate together and i think that we uh, we start to do that i think that the peace movement have to learn from the a feminist movement inside Israel and the asylum seeker and other uh, uh, conflict, uh, how to cooperate, and uh, it's just a start, and we have to push ourselves, so be ready for the Palestinians. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, going back uh, uh, to Nisane, um, we're looking at the political legitimacy 
of the Arab minority in Israel. And we see, for example, in the public opinion polls that the Israel Democracy Institute is doing every year that a vast majority of Israelis want, do not want the Palestinian uh, Israeli vote to count in any future decision regarding national security foreign policy issues. Uh, we see debates in the Knesset when a member of Knesset is Sawi Fred joined the Defense and Foreign Affairs Committee about how legitimacy is that. How much are those debates influencing the role that the Palestinian citizens of Israel can take, the issue of political legitimacy, and how can that legitimacy be uh, elevated, you think? Well, um, I, I think that the, the situation that we're in today is a result of a very structured work the right-wing government has been doing for, for the past several decades. Uh, they've painted this some zero equation that the, that, uh, the Arabs have to be the enemy. Uh, the Arabic Palestinian citizens of Israel are, part, are the enemy. They're part of the problem. Uh, but that's only because they know that we are part of the solution. They know that only by working Arab, the Arab Palestinian citizens of Israel, right with the Israeli Jewish citizens that believe in peace and believe in reaching an end, a just and fair end to the conflict, only by working together can we reach uh, that goal. And in order to stop those uh, attempts, they've painted us as the enemy. And the left wing, some of the center left um, um, uh, parties are playing into that game. They're biting into it. They're going right with the right wing because they think that's what's going to get them the voters. And they're just, I believe they're mistaken. I believe that only by having a very strong and cl clear voice that we will stand together and we will work together in order to reach an end to this 70 year long conflict can that be reached and only when we do that will we be able to really stop the right wing agenda of carrying on this endless fighting thank you uh, amnon how how does the jewish majority look at those issues of political legitimacy of, of the arab uh, citizens uh, also and can you share some insights from the work that the abraham fund initiatives are doing to elevate this political legitimacy in issues other than uh, foreign policy peace process ones thank you nimrod uh, before answering your question i i must share with you uh, an observation about about the, the past in terms of legitimacy for for the arab citizens and, and I'm going to, to say something harsh, and don't hold it against me. Prime Minister Rabin was assassinated in, back in Israel because of the fact that he legitimized the Arab vote. He was relying on Israeli Arab citizens to support his, the peace treaty with the Palestinians. And um, the right wing could not stand the idea that Israeli, the Israeli Arab Palestinian minority will actually uh, be legitimated as a stakeholder in uh, paving the future of Israel. And uh, beyond giving up uh, part of the land of Israel, Rabin was assassinated by the right wing exactly because of, this, uh, because of this scene, very basic scene that he did. He was counting and legitimizing Israeli Arab citizens. And since then, the Oslo Accord was a wake-up call for the right wing, and they decided to never again let Israeli Arab citizens to really impact um, the relations of Israel with the Arab world, and to be, and to be uh, participants in fundamental decision-making about the future of Israel. And ever since then, the right wing in Israel, and, and I, I call it organized crime, because it was very well organized uh, that ever since then, the Oslo Accord, the, the right wing has done all in its power to delegitimize the Arab vote in Israel, uh, with all sorts of tricks and shticks and everything. But the, the truth is that they succeeded. And today, uh, the, 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 the common wisdom, the, the, the common knowledge in Israel, or the common understanding, is that uh, Arab citizens should not be part, should, are not, they ca we cannot afford, we, meaning the Jews, cannot afford the Arabs to really um, take active part in decision-making about fundamental issues about the future of Israel. And, I'll, and now I'll say something about the work of the Abraham Fund. So we took upon ourselves a number of years ago to really bring back legitimacy, to regain legitimacy for the right of Israeli Arabs to, you know, to participate, to have a seat around the table, not only you know, on the receiving end, but to, to take part in decision-making processes, as Tabit says, in every realm of life. And part of what we did was to combat the notion, uh, incitement uh, against uh, Israeli Arab member, members of Knesset that they are not interested in anything else but 
um, the occupation and th that they're not doing anything for the benefit of their voters or for Israeli society as a whole. And one of the things that we did, we actually measured the work of Israeli Arab member, members of Knesset, and we've managed to prove uh, within a year that the amount of uh, Knesset work that they do is, uh, in, in terms of uh, local internal matters, uh, is exactly equal to the work of their Jewish counterparts. There was no, not a difference fundamentally between their work in the Knesset and the Jewish uh, Knesset members. Thank you. Uh, Tabet, uh, Amnon said before, identified some obstacles for the Palestinian citizens of Israel from their involvement in peace organization. Uh, do you see additional obstacles? And what do you see the benefit? Why should we try and have more Arabs in the peace organization? What will they contribute? Well, there are uh, many in, uh, obstacles. I, I believe that uh, the Israeli general discourse is to see Arabs as a great force for economic development. Because the economy is great, it's soft, it's win-win situation, it's good for the state, it's good for the Arabs. Well, f for, from the point of view of peace, Arabs are invisible. There are many Israelis who would like to see Arabs are invisible. Actually, I would like to remind all of you that Arabs never are part of any declaring war in Israel, but they are part of pushing peace ahead Amnon just mentioned the issue of Oslo agreement that rely on five vote voters in the Knesset. But also I would like to add that Gaza disengagement also was carried out because of one vote in the uh, law, constitution and law committee of the Knesset. So there are other obstacles, mainly the Israeli peace discourse. Okay, We are deeply or st strongly opposing the command, commanders for peace, military commanders for peace, the, uh, this discourse of demographic threat, the discourse of we are here and they are there, peace that built on the basis of separation is not going to work. When we talk about we are here and they are there, who are we? Am I we or there, okay? Am I Israeli or Palestinian? The best way for me to be here in Israel and to be there with my people. I would like to see my people have their own, civil, uh, own independent sovereign state alongside Israel. I would like to see peace and the free movement between my country, Israel, and my people there. So this discourse of the peace movement that based on separation is big, big obstacles. So the language, the terminology, the, the Israeli flag that in every single uh, demonstration uh, for peace, well, for many Arabs, the Israeli flag became the flag of the right wing. Unfortunately, I'm saying that, okay? That it's difficult for the Arabs to associate with. So we have to change that. How, if we are talking peace, why we cannot raise the Israeli flag and the Palestinian flag together, okay? And call for peace. So the benefit uh, from, uh, from participating in a peace movement is great for the Arabs. Arabs gaining a lot of things. You know, they are gaining in terms of economic benefits. They are the first, they are the real bridge to the Arab world, to the Palestinian people in terms of economic businesses, okay? And uh, they, they are losing that, okay? I'm talking about personal level. But really, we understand the expectations of our people, the Palestinian. I'm sitting with you here and half of my family in Gaza Strip. My cousins, my nephews, okay, my cousins are marching to the border every Friday, and I'm talking with them every Friday morning, and they're trying to push for peaceful marching there. Well, so it's very important for you to know that I'm looking to things not only through Israeli eyes. Yes, I'm Israeli citizens. I am looking to things also through Palestinians as an Arab eyes. Nowadays, I would like to tell you that the Arab, Arab community in large is a very politicized community. Okay, there is a real deep split in the issue of Syria. What happened in Syria the last few days? Half of the Arabs in favor of Assad's regime, okay? And half are supporting the opposition. So I think all of this energy can be channeled into Israeli peace movement and can contribute a lot to the Israeli uh, uh, peace movement. One more uh, uh, point. I think there is historical alienation of the Arabs 
We don't, you, we don't want you to come in droves to peace mo uh, movement, to come in a lot numbers in demonstration. You can color our demo peace demonstrations with Arab ca color. So we are losing Jews, Jewish citizens of the state of Israel. We understand that. People are telling us, come with a few numbers, okay? So it's really uh, being, in, being in very uh, difficult situation. So Arabs in large try to avoid these arguments. And uh, this is why we don't see many Arabs are participating in the uh, peace movement. Thank you. Samah, I would like to, to ask you the same question, but also perhaps add another dimension of how do you think the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza uh, relate to participations of Palestinians from Israel in peace organization, and whether based on your experience in, in feminism and activism, uh, can links between Palestinian, Jewish, Israeli, Arab women uh, have an added uh, factor in, in changing this, uh, these obstacles? Well, um, I think that um, um, after um, many years of, of being or um, um, a citizen of Israel, uh, the Palestinian inside Israel now are I call it like the post, uh, the shamanet, like the, we, we used to call the Arab uh, of the shamanet or the, yogurt, the Israeli yogurt, you know. And uh, uh, we are not there. We, we are uh, now have this uh, pure, uh, stable identity and uh, we are living this thing. And I think that uh, uh, the separation the, um, physically between uh, the Arabs inside Israel and in the West Bank and Gaza now is uh, falling apart and this is what makes the Israeli society uh, really afraid from this nation that have we have Palestinian all over you know the world and uh, in the diaspora and we are using the terminology actually of the Jewish communities around the world we are adapting this uh, terminology and this is really uh, 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 something that from for me as a Palestinian it's good because I I'm I'm a woman so I learn from other people uh, achievements and and uh, uh, challenges so I adapt the, the discourse so I'm I'm challenging as a woman now uh, the, you can't find someone from Ramallah who can accuse me that I am the traitor I am the, the woman who stayed in Israel and didn't run away like uh, my uh, family so we all know the stories of uh, about uh, our relatives across borders and and we, we have this inheritance, we have this history, and we are documenting that. The next step is what we are doing. Uh, Israel is a very small state based in the Middle East. I know that she acts like she is in the middle of Europe, but she's, she's in the Middle East. And in the Middle East, there are lots of Arab people. And we are part of them as well. And we speak the language. We speak fluent Hebrew. We speak fluent Arabic. And we are we are proud of that. So so we can be part, and we must be part. And for the benefits of Israel, we have to be part of the peace process. And uh, regarding your question um, uh, about uh, the women, I th I think that uh, um, uh, the women in in. The both boards we have the same statistics we have the same challenging we have we are we are facing the the system as as feminist as activists so we can find the cause we can find the, find the common ground and this is what we do we are fighting for uh, rights for uh, the personal status we are fighting i'm talking about inside israel we're struggling against the uh, um, religious control of our personal life we are struggling with the freedom of speech so we know what what's oppression is, and we know as Palestinian and as women, Jewish and Arab inside Israel, what oppression is. So we know how to deal with that. And I think that the ability of the woman to open doors, to open a, a partnership, and to build a trust is much more, um, uh, um, um, we are much more able to do that. And nobody's uh, now in the peace process uh, opening the door for us for, so as, like you know what women do they do it in them, themselves so we have to push ourselves in any stage and i i don't i know what's the crisis inside israel look look at us look at this panel we are like three uh, uh, arab representatives and with with the jewish uh, uh, faithful partner to speaking about the israeli society and the peace process this is what happened 10 years ago or 20 years ago so we are making progress and the israeli uh, we have to teach the israeli society to deal with it. Thank you for taking the discussion from, uh, from identifying the need and the obstacles to already looking ahead and uh, identifying possible uh, ways. And before we open up uh, to your questions, I would like to have a closing round 
of this future-oriented look, uh, identifying the linkage between what happens inside Israel, Jewish-Arab relations inside Israel, and the Israeli-Palestinian peace process, the cross-border issue, uh, what can be done to improve both the relation between the group within Israel and through that uh, to improve the situation between Israel and the Palestinians? And I will give each of you a chance to kind of do that and close up uh, if there are any other remark that you would like to add now, you can, you can do it. So, Nisreen, please. Right. Well, um, I'm very happy you asked that question because that's exactly what we at Standing Together do. We work, we're a grassroots movement that work on organizing and mobilizing the people in the Israeli society, both Arabs, uh, Palestinian citizens, and Jewish citizens towards uh, joint struggles and working together in various fields, including civil um, justice, um, equality, and peace. Uh, we believe that only by working together and joining hands can we reach uh, that goal because um, peace is not only uh, a moral issue. It's not only a Palestinian, it's good, not only good for the Palestinians, it's good for the Israeli society. The amounts of funds that go into the, maintaining the occupation are enormous and they can easily be, go to uh, fighting poverty inside of Israel, fighting, um, working for the equality of their Palestinian citizens inside of Israel, working for the elderly community, for the people with handicaps. Also, the loss of lives is enormous on both sides of the border. So it's a joint uh, cause, it's a joint goal, and we believe in working together. Because we, as the Arab Palestinian minority, might not be able to reach peace alone, but the Israeli uh, Jewish uh, partners that we have that want to reach peace cannot do that without us. So we have to work together in order to reach that goal. And only when we understand that uh, peace is that when we reach peace, we will also be able to benefit our society and to, to better our, uh, the way it looks and to have a better future for everybody, not just the Palestinian Arabs but all, uh, of Israel, but also the Jewish people of, in, inside of Israel, can we succeed in, in reaching uh, a peace. And it's important to say it has to be a very fair and just agreement. It has to be agreement that is good for both sides, because otherwise it's not true peace. Well... <laughs> We are uh, Arab citizens of Israel. We have a lot of challenges. We didn't talk here today about the challenges, that basic challenges that we are facing as citizens inside the city of Israel, citizens of Israel. Bills, introducing bills, racist bills, uh, discriminatory uh, laws, that it, it's a, a matter of uh, weekly, all, always there is something in you. We, we don't have the luxury to abandon this kind of daily work. So our NGOs, our uh, com political parties are really engaged in this kind of things. For us, issue of peace is very, very important. We'd like to part of it, uh, but you have to remember always that there are a set of things that we have to work in. Again, going back to the discourse, for the Israelis, we have to define which peace we are talking about. There is a Peace is a vague word in Israel. Peace, peace. Everybody wants peace. I'm not here to criticize the great work that done by women organizations. But I would like to ask which peace we are talking about, okay? It's peace, that with two-state solution. What about the, the, the emphasizing the issue of security? Security, security, okay? Security is enhancing. I know that the needs, there is a needs for the security of Israel, state of Israel, but we cannot talk about that only day and night. Iran, all the time Iran. The enemy is there. It, it feels that the Israeli society needs the, uh, the enemy always. So enemy is the, the enemy is can binding people together, okay? Can binding people together. Well, for me, the issue of security is very important. However, I would like to know what's about water, cleaning water for my people, the Palestinians in Gaza. What about the siege? What about the electricity? Four hours, very basic things. It's also security, okay? It's about life. So we, uh, I wish that, that uh, I would love to see, honestly, I would love to see the peace movement of Israel today with tens of thousands of Israelis going to the border of Gaza, okay? Say, let's march, let's talk, okay? On the border, okay? Let's lift the siege. I think uh, it seems to me that we are not doing all of this kind of things. So we need to change the discourse. I know that the right wing is adopting a fear discourse and they're succeeding in, in adopting fear discourse and politics of fear. Fear become in Israel is a winning ticket for the election, okay? And we cannot, we have to clear, unfortunately, the left and center parties in Israel, okay? They are not clear in this issue. 
they are moving all the time to give compromises to the, uh, the right wing instead of stand with a clear message of withdrawal to 1967 border of full negotiations and a compromise. And that's it. They are not, not doing that. We are not there. But we always will be. I'm going to stay always will be there. The 20% always will be in favor of peace negotiation and two-state solution. That's it. Okay, so um, against all you know the chances, I see the 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 positive way. Like uh, we we don't have the the privilege to close our eyes and forget about it. We naivety and and believing the good of the people is a you know crucial tool for any woman and any peace activist. And uh, I think that you know. Um, uh, what's happening now in Israel and in the States about the at a severe and brutal attack against the uh, left-wing organization and peaceful organization and anything related to the relationship between Palestinian and Israeli, it seems that the regime or the people up, uh, up there in charge they are really afraid of this kind of dialogue. And actually, look about you know this panel, and we are Palestinians who are, are now having open solidarity for breaking the silence. Breaking the Silence is an organization of Israeli soldiers <laughs> that uh, if you ask me five years ago about breaking the silence, I will say like this is the Zionist, you know, people who go to the army and they go, come to us, lecture uh, us and regret about what they did in the army. And now under the attack of the government, look at about the new Israel fund. You can't find uh, now uh, any uh, organization uh, my, uh, in, in, based in Israel who are not having this empathy and, and feeling bad for what's happening to the new Israel fund. So this kind of attack open uh, opportunities for cooperation and we have to be wise and and this is what happened actually when Trump uh, uh, was elected uh, people and minorities and the the, uh, the struggles in the states for the feminist struggle the gun ban uh, uh, the asylum seekers the immigration all of this uh, small uh, struggles around uh, around the, his election bring people the same march in in, in, in in thousands and this is what what she, what she, we, we have to do. Wahda uh, Salam Neve Shalom, a small village, became a hub for 42 peace organizations. And the media don't want to know about what we are doing. We don't want to know about the small, uh, small uh, initiatives and projects and successes here and there because because we are not there. So we decided, for example, and and we we try to do something that uh, the social media activists, Arab and Jewish, and we are talking about women social media activists. They are now going to being trained to uh, rise up their voices, the other voice. And my dream is to have a, a, a peace activist, Jewish peace activist. And uh, yes, I will challenge their Zionist movement and Zionist background as, as a woman, as a Palestinian, as a peace activist. And I, I, I'm convinced that there are some partners in that party. And I want J Jewish activists to speak and to write. And I will translate their says in Arabic because they, we have have to open the, that door. And if the Palestinians inside Israel don't do that role, we are missing our uh, uh, mission. Thank you. So I would say that three things need to be done um, looking forward. The first one is to um, recognize the elephant in the room, which is about future separation between Jews and Arabs in Israel. It's never going to happen. Uh, if and when there'll be a two-state solution, Israel will be the home of Jews and Palestinians as well. They'll be citizens. And the notion of separation that we are, uh, that, that some of the organizations, like those General for Peace or whoever they are, are selling, it's not true. It's false. It's never going to happen. Uh, this is one thing. The second thing, political alliance between Jews and Arabs. Israel needs to be, you know, it's about time the Jews and, and Palestinians in Israel will form a political alliance, a Jewish-Arab party. This is, this is the right time. It needs to be done, and eventually it will be a major force for peace. And the last piece of this three-piece puzzle is to design viable mechanisms and social mechanisms and solutions for Jews and Arabs to live together and share this, the public sphere and share the workspace and share the academia and the political realm and the media and everything else and be able to live together in equal terms. And this is exactly the work of the Abraham Fund. This is what we are obsessed on doing. We are designing those mechanisms for the future. 
uh, which will be very applicable for a two-state solution or even for a one-state solution, which I don't support. But, you know, who knows what will happen in the future? As I said, Jews and Arabs will live here, will live there in Israel together, and they need to be, we need to provide the right ideas, applicable ideas, practical ideas for Jews and Arabs to, to share the same territory. Thank you to all of you for sharing so much uh, information and so many insights with us in the first half of, of this session. And I'm sure it gives uh, lots of food for thought and maybe room for many questions that you may have. Uh, the way we will be handling this is that there is a mic in the middle of the, uh, the corridor. This is because we are live streamed, so we want people to see you uh, all over the world. Uh, when you approach the, the mic, please uh, state your name, say who you are. Uh, please make your questions short because there will probably be uh, other people waiting to ask as well. You can already line up uh, after the mic. We'll be collecting three questions at a time and let the, um, the speakers uh, respond. If you are addressing your question to a specific speaker, uh, please state so. Uh, so we already have someone waiting, so please. Thank you. Um, Cedric Sussman from Atlanta. And I'd like to pick up on the last remark about the infrastructure. Uh, we've been told by the current government that in spite of a lot of their things they've done negatively, that they are spending more money on infrastructure in the Palestinian areas of Israel. Is that correct? How much of that is real? And if so, how helpful is that in integrating the Palestinians into Israeli society more completely. We'll take three at a time, so the next one. Please. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation. I'm Paul Sham. I'm a president of Partners for Progressive Israel and I. I also teach Israel, <coughs> Israel studies at the University <coughs> of Maryland. I wanted to ask you, we all heard yesterday that Tammy Zenberg, the new Emeritus Chair, talked about uh, joining a, a, coal, a, a center left coalition a government. Since we're imagining a future, we can imagine that. What would happen to the joint list in such a, a case? I assume it would fracture I uh, obviously, as you all emphasize, Arab votes as well as Arab support is essential. How do you think that might work? And how would there be enough Arab support to give a strong uh, um, support for such a left government. Thank you. And the last question for this round. Yes, it's um, related to can the younger you, can generation. You say your name? I'd just like to hear a little bit about, you know, how, what is the feeling amongst the, the new generation of Palestinians in Israel, and uh, you know how how they're relating to their situation. It's, I'd like to hear about that. Okay, so we have a question about uh, investment in infrastructure, about a joint lease under different political scenarios, and now about the next generation. Uh, let's start uh, this way. You do not have to answer all questions. You can choose whatever you want to relate to. Uh, and again, keep it short so we'll have time for other rounds. Amnon, please. I'll just say a word about the uh, economic development plan of this, uh, this current government. Uh, it is true that this government under Netanyahu uh, invest in what they perceive as the economic peace. Only problem is that they see it as a substitute to a political arrangement and, and to other form of people-to-people uh, -people and, and other social mechanisms. Uh, it is true that whenever it comes to um, economic benefit, potential economic benefit for Israel, this government is willing to invest more than ever 
in narrowing gaps between Jews and Arabs. The only problem is, and there is a, there is a plan which was cooked at the Ministry of uh, Finance with Arab mayors and with Arab members of Knesset, and it is being, uh, actually being operated. It's, it's very good. Uh, on the other hand, whenever it comes to the rhetoric of the government to propose legislation, to policy, it's about marginal marginalizing the Arab community and pushing it to the corner and threatening it. So in a word, in, in, in a nutshell, you can say that this government suffer from a sort of a bipolar disorder when it comes to the, to the Arab minority. They don't know exactly what, what they want. And, uh, and their, their uh, toxic rhetoric offsets uh, their positive action and actually won't let it to maximize the benefit. I can talk about about later about uh, about youngsters' attitude if if you want. But uh, you you want to talk about the young Palestinians <laughs> <laughs> and the join list. Okay, so <laughs> I, I I think the young generation and I, I'm 42, so I'm not. I don't know what's as young, and uh, I, I assume that I'm that uh, <laughs> still on the border. But I think that. Um, uh, the young generation is uh, uh, fed up of the uh, current leadership. They are uh, frustrated and uh, uh, they uh, don't really believe. Uh, actually, I also, also in the Palestinian uh, uh, territories in Gaza and in Ramallah and the West Bank and the, um, the lack of the gap, of, you know, uh, the absence actually of the leadership from both sides is, is making the, uh, uh, the young uh, generation is more on Twitter and f if, if Facebook and, and consuming the, their uh, uh, awareness from the social media uh, spera and uh, 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 I think that they are looking for uh, um, more creative and connections between people and between uh, revolutional, you know, um, radical uh, uh, movement and to challenge the system and uh, this is uh, um, and from both uh, sides. Uh, inside Israel, uh, the Palestinian uh, uh, young people, and like, um, I have a son who's 21 years old, so um, I know that he's looking for the future. I know that he's a uh, He's um, like a, a, a citizen of the universe, you know. He he don't see the, he know what's what's the Nakba story in our uh, uh, family, and he know what we are doing in Wahdi Salam Neve Shalom as a model of shared society, and he know what's the next step is to go uh, uh, forward, you know, to move on, and and this is this kind of energy I see it uh, all uh, uh, all over. Uh, the join list I was actually, and I, I'm not sure that will gonna be like popular answer but I was disappointed from uh, uh, the declaration yesterday from Tamar Zansberg uh, um, to uh, I think that uh, one of the biggest mistakes of the left in Israel that they didn't really challenge the left left go to the minorities Jewish people here march with Martin Luther King and they go to the extreme left in the apartheid state in, in South Africa. Minorities wa were together and give up some of their privileges to be there. And when she's talked about the center left uh, um, uh, government that she is dreaming about and we are all hoping that she will achieve our dream and isolated and not uh, counting 20% uh, of the uh, her citizens and the citizens of Israel, this kind of start is not a good start to, to revolution. To, the, to change the system, and I think that uh, she have to dare and to be courage enough. And I, yes, I do have expectation and high expectation. And we have to, you know, in order to end up in the center, we have to uh, uh, to be uh, radical left in these days. Last sentence about about the join list. I think that join list. Uh, I will, you know, uh, I think that. I'm not that popular with, I write about them a lot, but uh, I think that they also have uh, to change at, at least 50% of, uh, of our representative. They, their uh, speak, their, their uh, agenda is not relevant anymore. Uh, we have 50% uh, also from the young one who are trying to uh, do more and they are trying to, uh, uh, to play the game of the Israeli democracy till the end. And uh, 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 I am with them and, and they, I think that uh, nobody need polygamist uh, uh, Knesset member in the Knesset. Well. 
I believe that uh, the joint list should change, okay, but not before changing figures, we change agenda. And changing agenda means agenda that more uh, is pushing toward uh, working together with the Israeli left, Zionist left. We don't have to, uh, to, to ignore this word, Zionist. Yes, Zionist. I see Tam Tamar Zinberg is a fresh leadership that we should, we will push for cooperation with Tam, Tam Zinberg and the leftist, uh, uh, leftist organization or parties. Uh, the joint list have Mamash in the last, sorry, Mamash. Uh, it's in the end of uh, its period. The joint list uh, have to understand, and they already realized they made a mistake. Not only Tammy Zenberg made a mistake, the joint list made a mistake not having his scheme or the theme. What's his scheme or the theme in English? Uh, surplus vote agreement. Sur surplus vote. But the uh, joint list have to understand to cooperate, not only the, to think about the whole idea of how to bring more voters, how to bring the Arab voters in a drove to the ballots. That's what we need, really. Okay? To topple Netanyahu, it cannot happen without the Arab votes. And Arab votes should increase in terms of numbers. Okay? Their agenda, and I, as I mentioned that, unfortunately, they agree in one thing. The whole four different parties in one joint list, you know, just like think about merits and shots together. It's, it's, it's crazy. Okay, they agree in one thing only, okay, opposing Netanyahu's government. But if you know Arabic and just watch what's going on in the social media now regarding the uh, Syrian case, you can understand that we are talking about different people, different parties. We should respect the Arab people, the Arab people, very, the Arab citizens, very smart people. Most of them really would like cooperation with the Zionist left, and I believe it's a matter of one year, not more than that. It's going to happen after the coming election, not before, to see an Arab Jewish political party, and big one, not a small one. And, and you already have a, a list, by the way, going for the Jerusalem municipal elections. A joint list, uh, which is going there. Jewish, I will see how that goes. Okay. In so um, I'm going to start about the question about the center-left uh, government. Um, right now, any most parties, like my um, colleagues have said, um, have, like I said before, have bought into the right-wing agenda. They've bought into the rhetoric. They're talking just like Netanyahu would have talked a couple of months ago. And until they, if they don't change that. There's not going to be a left government. Like, they're not going to outright the right. Like, they're not going to beat them at their own game. Uh, so the only way to really reach that goal in terms of uh, if they want a center-left government is to change the rhetoric, is to change what's being said in the in the public sphere. Uh, and the only way to do that, they have to start about their. Um, attitude towards the Arab citizens, the Palestinian citizens of Israel, because we are 20% of the country. They can't ignore us. Uh, and they're trying to do, it's not going to work, we're not going anywhere, they're kind of stuck with us, and, and they have to deal with that. Uh, so if they really want to reach government, if they really want to reach power, they have to work alongside the, the Arab uh, parliament members, whether they may disagree with them on some issues, and that's fine, but we sometimes have to build partnerships with people that we might disagree on one issue to, to, to reach a point that we want to reach. And that's what leadership is. They're supposed to be the, the leaders, so lead <laughs> uh, on that point. And in terms of the, of the younger generation participation, it's important to realize, that as a millennial myself, things have changed. The, the, a lot of information is out there at the touch of your hand, on your phone. Uh, the younger generation is very well informed. They know their history. They know their present. They know where they want to be in the future. They are strong. They are activists. They have a new mode and new ways of activism because of social media. And they're extremely creative because they do these amazing things that we could only dream about in the past. And these are it's a, a fountain of, of skills and abilities that that are going into the right direction and um, the ability to intercommunicate in different, between different countries in the world and to reach people on the other side of the planet that the young generation has today is a breaking point, I believe, in, in our 
struggle towards peace and towards agreements because we realize at the end of the day that it's good for all of us. Thank you. We'll, we'll take another round of questions. So again, please introduce yourself uh, and try to keep it short. So I'm Edward Witten from Princeton, New Jersey, and my question is the following. Arab citizens are 21% of Israel, which on paper is enough to elect 25 Knesset members, but the joint list, the Arab party in Israel, has 13 Knesset members. So my question is, what's the main reason for this gap, and what are the prospects for increasing Arab representation in the Knesset? David DeGroote, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, regarding the low participation of uh, Arab citizens of Israel in the peace movement, uh, some of you have alluded to this from previous conversations I've had with those people. Top of their agenda is equal rights, municipal budgets, job opportunities, infrastructure, health care, education. They say solve these problems first within Israel and then come and talk to us about the peace process and the two-state solution. I was wondering what your thoughts were on that. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ethan from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and I was wondering, because historically, and even today, of course, uh, Arab MKs haven't really been included in government, what can Arab Israelis do unless and until that happens uh, to force some of these issues? Thank you. Thank you for the question. We'll start the other way this time around. So, uh, Nisreen, you can go first. Okay. Um, I'm going to start about the, with the first and the last. Actually, I'm just going to answer the, the last question about the Arab uh, representatives in government. Uh, first of all, we don't need to be in the government to pressure the government. We can be present in the Knesset. We've, done, we've seen that in the, in the area of Rabin, that, in the era of Rabin, sorry, that the, the Arab um, MK members were a supporting um, a group to him. They enabled the, the Oslo processes and, and many other laws that he tried to, um, to pass, and, and that was only possible because of the MK, uh, Arab MK support. So whether we are or we are not in the government is not really an issue. We can be just as effective and just as uh, influ influential outside of the government. That doesn't really bother us much. But uh, and in the current states of affairs, I really don't see how that how being part of the government is possible. Uh, after we reach uh, a peaceful agreement, when an Arab MK wouldn't have to vote yes or no for war on God knows where. Uh, maybe we'll talk again, but right now I really, honestly, realistically do not see that happening. Uh, and it's not much of an issue in any case. In terms of the gap in representation, well, don't worry, we'll fix that. That's pretty much my answer. Well, I believe that uh, we should learn from the other models around the world with minorities, even if to learn something from what's going on with the Haredic Jews. I'm not sure that, yes, I understand that it's tough for us to be in a, in a government such as the right-wing government, Netanyahu's government. Maybe other governments that can, leaning toward peace, we can be part of it or leaning toward a block like the era of Rabin, for example, to try to do things. But we have to stop with the politics of cry. We have to stop with the politics of reactionary politics. Waiting for Lieberman to say something extreme and then all of our 13 MKs will jump on in Lieberman and that's it. No. We have to think about integration within the political system, Israeli political system. We are part of Israel, part of the system. We have to play the game until the end. Let's just understand how the Haredic Jews are doing that. I'm not saying that we have to adopt everything. Now, regarding numbers and figures, well, Arabs making up 20% of the total population, they will never, even if they vote, a full vote, they will not have 25 MKs. Uh, and, uh, just because the Arab uh, community is younger population, in the best case, Arabs will reach to 16, 17 MKs, and that's the whole thing. We have problems. Arab believe that uh, Knesset voting for the Knesset is not really uh, good enough for us. We cannot really benefit that much from those who are uh, opposing uh, election, participating in the election. In any case, 
There are several specific community who are not participating in the election. They are not voting. I'm talking about mainly the Bedouins of the Negev. Less than 50% of the voters, Bedouin votes are participating. I'm talking about the Druze who are well represented in all political parties, especially in the right. Okay, they are uh, less than 50% there. I believe there is the potential to increase our uh, our uh, members of the Knesset mean that uh, I'm case from the Arab community from 13 to 17. We have to work it. We can tip the balance within the political Israeli political system if we work well. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I, I have to correct myself. I said in the last uh, comment that uh, nobody need the polygamist uh, Knesset member and in the join list, and um, nobody need polygamist at all. So this is the correction. <laughs> Not only in the Knesset, uh, there are <laughs> except the polygamist. Um, so uh, uh, I think that for you, sir, who just asked about the uh, uh, peace economy and the investment of the um, uh, or the agenda of the political Knesset member, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, you are adapting like what you see, what you heard from the Israeli media, and uh, Amnon talked about that. I think that uh, uh, um, um, achieving um, you know, professional uh, integration and economic integration and uh, will lead you know, spontaneously and, and it's normal and it's have to be to lead to political integration, okay? I can't be with master's degree doing my, my research and activism and, and aware and write in English and Hebrew and so on and not to be part of what's happening around me. You know, that this, this kind of Palestinians who are really, you know, strong, aware uh, human beings and, and speaking about democracy and equality and fighting for and struggling for, for their rights, they have to be a political creatures. The, the, uh, the, the, the tools that we need are, are political, and we, are, we have to play the game. So, so we cannot be strong like economically and leading now. We, uh, in a few years, the Arab citizens will lead, the, for example, the health system in Israel, and not to be aware of, what, of the other side. So it's, it's the whole package. You, know? you can't divide the, the Palestinian personality. And yes, in, in the, in the, this, the, that's why the Israeli society don't know what to, de to do with us, you know, that because uh, economic empowerment goes with political empowerment, okay? Uh, for, uh, um, we cannot fix, we, we, don't, we don't fix, uh, you know, uh, Thabit says that he uh, don't really agree about like four uh, uh, parties to be in the same thing. We have a government with Liberman going with the Yahduta Torah. So if, if the join list is crazy, this government is crazy. So so yes, we have to aim higher. We have, we, I know that we are not going to be in the government, but I, in, maybe in the next uh, decade, I don't know. But I think that we have to aim higher and we have to, ha to put the you know, high expectation and then we will achieve more. To be there and to have 17 uh, 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 Knesset members, and this is the, that's it, like what we n want to do, like to be in few committees, and, and this, is, this is what we are struggling for? No, if we have to be part of the peace process, if we have to be part of the Israeli society, if we have to be part of the Arab nation and, uh, speaking, uh, and to dare to speak about, you know, and to defend the, the Palestinian cause, we have to aim more and we have to dare to ask for more and this is what we should do. You know, and, and to be there in the Knesset, it's not, it's not like we have to be checked, you know. Uh, this is what my, my father's generation did, that we have four or five uh, Knesset, uh, 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 Knesset members. I need more and uh, we have to struggle for more than to be there. Yeah, and for me, aiming higher is about numbers, first of all, and there needs to be more Arab members of Knesset in the joint list and also in the Zionist party parties, and when, when, wherever it's possible to get better representations of the Arabs in the parliament, but also the quality of the political work. And I, accept, I expect politicians, including Arab politicians, to engage in the dirty game of politics and to make alliances and to push and pull and to deliver um, um, for their community and, and, and their voters. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, during this economic plan, 
um, um, planning process, uh, Ayman Ode and the joint list engaged with the Ministry of Finance. And I remember Ayman telling, telling me uh, that he spoke with the Minister of Finance about 50 times uh, over half a year or something. And he, he was part of actually designing and cooking and facilitating this plan. And this is the work that we expect. It's not only about numbers. Uh, the Arab, the fatigue of the Arab community from the political system in Israel is due to the fact that Arab members are sitting in the Knesset, they scream and they shout and they're being kick, kick, kicked out of the Knesset, but they're not doing anything meaningful, anything that deals with actual politics. And this has to stop. They need to engage and to make alliances. Thank you. We have just about five minutes to conclude, to wrap up. I would like to give a chance to those who are waiting to, to ask their questions. So please do it uh, quickly. And then we don't need all of us to answer again. Those of you who want to make a, a remark, you can do it very quickly. Yeah, please. Um, hi, my name is Noam. I'm from Lewis and Clark College in Portland, Oregon. Um, I was wondering, we've talking, been talking a lot about politics, but more about on the ground, um, basically what Palestinian Israelis face with racism, as well as the role of language and speaking Arabic and Hebrew, and the role, like the power that Hebrew has um, as a colonizing language. Yeah, that's my question. Michael Goldstein, New Rochelle, New York. Uh, the term elephant in the room is probably overused, and I think there are a lot of elephants in this room. Uh, a question for the Palestinian Israeli Arabs. Uh, the gentleman on the right mentioned friends and relatives in Gaza. And I think for a lot of Israelis and American Jews who are pro peace, uh, the elephant in the room is Hamas. And the, uh, my friends at APAC say, How can you give the West Bank uh, away and then Hamas will be 12 miles from Tel Aviv and can shut down Ben Gurion any time with rockets? So how is the, what is the perception of Hamas in the Israeli Arab community, and how do you propose to defeat Hamas? I'm not talking militarily, because Hamas, I think, is, a, is an indigenous Palestinian uh, entity and has to be dealt with in any realistic, practical uh, vision of peace. Thank you. Carol Mailman, uh, Brooklyn, New York. Nobody has addressed the future, as we look more forward maybe than one decade, of the demographics and the fear of many Jews that the demographics will mean that eventually the Palestinians in Israel will be the majority and that the Jewish people will lose their majority. And that's part of the reason, I think, for the refugee problem. Thank you. So each of the speakers that want to give an answer has no more than one minute uh, to answer. And there will be panels throughout the next two days covering some of the issues that were raised, including Hamas and Gaza. Uh, one minute. Go. I'm not. Um, the democratic um, uh, demon or devil, you know, we're, we, we're dealing uh, with, with this demon all the time. Um, I, I think that uh, it goes without saying that a two-state solution, uh, which uh, my understanding is that most of you support this notion, uh, will um, uh, pr prevent or delay this, uh, this, 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 um, the realization of, of this nightmare or dream. Uh, and, and this is why we're all working. Uh, this, is, this is part of the reasons. But as I said, Jews and Arabs will keep uh, living in Israel. And it doesn't matter if the minority will be 20%. 40%, 45%, 50%, it doesn't matter. Israel will always be the home, the perfect and full and equal home of both Jews and Arabs. And this is why, for me, you know, I'm, I'm not obsessed with this question. Regarding the issue of Hamas, Hamas, I just would like to tell you that I'm really aware what's going on in Gaza. I'm talking with my relatives every day. Just to remind all of you that 10 years ago, the overwhelming majority of the Gazans the stronghold of Hamas, the Gazan voted for Abu Mazen and for Abu Mazen agenda as a president of Palestine. Just to remind all of you on that. What we need to give hope to the Gazans, the fact that the more poverty in Gaza, the more people will stick with Hamas. Just people, if there is a real election right now, true election, the overwhelming majority of the Palestinians in Gaza will vote against Hamas. Hamas brought them to misery, okay? But Hamas, just like 
most if not all of the Arab regimes are dictatorship regimes. We have to help the Palestinians to live better life and we are not helping. The siege in Gaza should be lifted. The siege is actually helping Hamas and strengthening Hamas in Gaza. We have to bring to, to movements, some movement to the Palestinians of Gaza, to the West Bank at least. To, can you imagine 200, 100, 200,000 workers from Gaza uh, in Israel, okay? Why not, okay? I think this will help, the, help us to try uh, to topple Hamas and the Hamas agenda. Okay, well, I first want to toggle the question about the language. That's actually a very good question, and thank you for asking that. Um, one of the first tools of oppression has always been attacking and detaching people from their language and their heritage and their connection to their identity. That will not happen. Arabic has always been and will always be part of the public sphere in, the, in Israel. Uh, the right-wing government can pass as many laws as they want. We will still have a very strong connection. We still read in Arabic. We still speak in Arabic. It will still be present everywhere you look. And so that's just something that they're going to have to live with because that's the way it's going to be. We're not going to have that any other way. Thank you. And about the, just a sentence about the, the whole thing about the dem demographics. It's we're human beings. We're living there. I'm sorry, but I refuse to look at myself as a demographic, demographic threat like people, a lot of people do. And we have to find a way of toggling these difficult issues that I understand are really concerning to many people, and I understand where they're coming from. But we have to stop looking at each other as threats and to figure out a way to live together. So thank you, Nasreen. This is, you know, I, I, you said you speak about the elephant and uh, right now, the elephant in the room, right now you are talking about like the elephant in my womb, like in my, <laughs> my body. Look, I'm, I'm, you know, I think that Palestinian Israeli conflict have to go, you know, out of, uh, of the woman's body, the Jewish and the Palestinian woman. I think that we have to start to take care of our children, not to, uh, about our birth control bills of the uh, Ethiopian, Mizrahi, and the Haredi women, and the Palestinian women. And uh, uh, you say that, uh, uh, like, uh, the majority or the, uh, the democratic threat now in Israel, uh, if, uh, we are now 50% uh, the Palestinian, almost like this is, was a debate in Israel, the Palestinian and the Israelis from the uh, river to the sea. So if, if you say that this is Israel, as yes, we are 50% of the population. But if you are talking about the Israeli borders inside the Israeli citizen, we are 20% of the population. For the last, you know, if everybody left and we'll still one Palestinian uh, man or woman, he will be a threat because he is Palestinian. So we should change the dialogue, not, not to adapt what, what you see and what you hear in the media. And this kind of debate is not helping the peace process. We have to take care of the people or the children who are we bringing them to this world and to be responsible for their future and not about the birth rate of, of the both sides. Thank you. Uh, I think they said uh, the conversation uh, that we had over the last hour and a half showed you know, the potential of uh, greater involvement of Palestinian citizens of Israel in efforts to promote peace. Uh, should, uh, the, we think we should uh, try to contribute to this linkage between the domestic uh, Jewish-Arab issues and the Israeli-Palestinian cross-border issues. And I thank to all of those around this panel for the work that they are doing for that uh, goal. And thank you for your involvement in that. Uh, 10 o'clock, the plenary uh, begins. See you there.